Welcome to the Women's Football Show here on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Joined here with Alison McConnell as always. And we're out of the office today, Alison. We're joined here with the Rangers captain, Rangers training centre, Nicola Doherty. Nicola, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's been a day off too. So Indeed. Right. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All good. <laughs> First of all, talk us through the season. How's it going so far? Yes, yeah, it's, it's going really well so far. I think, um, obviously, we were disappointed with the, the result against Glasgow City, that 1-1 one, one draw. But apart from that, we've managed to pick up maximum points. It was, it's exactly what we wanted from the start of the season. Um, we're obviously in, um, doing a new style of play as well under Joe. So it's, it's a really exciting place to be at the moment. And we're, we're delighted with how things have started so far. Talk to us about the manager then. Her experience down south especially. What else does she bring to the squad? I think Joe just demands high standards. You knew that as soon as Joe walked through the door. The, the vast amount of experience that she has, obviously an ex-Lioness player and obviously playing in, in the WSL as well. So she has so much experience within the women's game and that's something that was vital for us, making sure that we got the, the right ne manager next to come through the door. And I think the club have done brilliantly in managing to get Joe through the door and, and you can really see the changes within the team in terms of standards at this club because we know being at a club like Rangers, you're, there's pressure on you to win trophies. So for us, we're, we're really excited to be a part of that. Was that a big thing last season, Nicola, just um, reflecting on how the campaign ended? And I know you, you won the, the League Cup, but missing out the Scottish Cup and the, and, and the league so dramatically too. Was it, a, was it a real hunger, do you think, going into the start of this campaign to try and address that? Yeah, we're obviously gutted the way last season ended. I think we almost underachieved. Um, like you say, you, like, or like I say, that you play for a club like Rangers, you're expected to win every game. So for us, we were gutted and we obviously wanted to make changes to that this season. We've obviously got new management and new assistant and stuff as well. So for us, it's focusing on one game at a time. I think it's, it's so cliche to say it, but for us, it is one game at a time. And you're starting to see small improvements every week whenever we're playing. So, yeah, it, we want to change what happened last season and hopefully we can go and do that. What was the dressing room like that afternoon just at, at Hamden? You know, you came in, you just lost the lost the league the weekend before and then lost to Celtic at Hamden in the, the Scottish Cup final. How, was it a quiet dressing room was it, or, or was it you know, lots of recrimination between players? I think it was probably a wee bit more deflated, I think. I think that's probably the, the correct word to use. I think we were just so gutted as players. We knew that we, we, we trained so hard every week and to come away from the disappointment of losing that game at Hamden and obviously the way we lost the the league and stuff as well against Glasgow City the last game of the season so we're a bit deflated but I think we've got a strong group of players where it was kind of an arm round each other's shoulders to make sure that this doesn't happen again that we, we come back in pre-season make sure that we're fitter we're stronger and we're better uh, to, to try and obviously improve from last season. That's the thing as well watching someone else party in your own garden can be much fun when, when Glasgow City went and won it. Yeah obviously it was it was a tough one to take for us as players and staff it's it's never going to be easy losing league titles, but especially when you're you're playing on home soil and um, you're you're on Ibrox as well. So I think that was that was a difficult aspect of it. But look for us as players, our main focus is to turn that around and make sure that we do better this season. You've picked up the captaincy this season, of course. How much do you look forward to relishing that challenge? Yeah, I, I take it with great pride. I've obviously been a Rangers fan since I was a kid. I used to go to the the games with my dad as a young kid at Ibrox every weekend. So for me to obviously take on that role and responsibility, I, I know that it brings a lot of pressure, because especially when you're playing for a huge club like Rangers. But for me, it's it's something that I, that I relish and, and I want to take on and that, res that responsibility. But like I've said previously, there's so many other leaders within the dressing room. I think it takes more than one person to lead a team at Rangers and, and we've got vast amount of experience within the team as well to go and do that. Were you surprised at the captaincy this summer just in, in the week came well obviously Catherine had been captain and then uh, it came over to you were you surprised by it you, how, how did it come about? Yeah of course obviously I was obviously a little bit surprised when it happened but look I just came in to training and, and was myself uh, I always like to demand high standards it's, it's, a, it's a type of player that I've always been um, and I, I think Joe's obviously just liked that side but me and Kathy have a good relationship on and off the pitch, so none of that changed or affected anything between me and Kathy. So, so yeah, of course it was. It's obviously sometimes it's difficult for a player when sometimes something's removed from you. But I think Kathy, like, dealt with it really well. And, and like I said, me and Kathy have a great relationship, so nothing changed between me and her. If someone had to take you back to your ten-year-old self and show you that here you are, you're sitting at the Rangers training centre. This is your training complex, your, your manager of Rangers, you're looking forward to a game at Ibrox later this month against Hibs, would you believe them? 
Probably not. I, sometimes I still have to pinch myself that I'm even a full-time professional in Scotland. I think if you look back to the women's game back when I was, I was, I was at Rangers back when I was like 17, and the changes that the club have enforced is incredible. Um, the board has backed us massively the past three or four years. So to see the changes from where it's where it's been to where it is now is, is huge for women's football in Scotland, and I hope it's only going to continue going that direction. But like you said, we've got a massive game at Ibrox and something that we, we love playing there. We obviously get a good number of fans in as well and that's something that the club are trying to keep pushing is making sure that we're the best team in Scotland in terms of promotion and marketing and media. So I think the club are doing excellent in that part and hopefully we can go and put on a show at Ibrox as well. Did you say that was key at the end of last season, especially when it was the three horse race? I feel like that the fans attending the games were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think that's, you've, you've hit the nail on the head there for me. I think the women's game in Scotland is is improving and it's probably the fastest growing sport in the world, women's football. So for here in Scotland, you, you can see the difference. I remember when I was at Glasgow City, we won the, the league for eight years in a row and, and they obviously continue to go and do that. But then when you see other teams investing and, and making sure that you try and make it more competitive, it's more exciting for the fans to see as well. You don't want to just see a team running away with a league every, every year. So to see that it went right down to the wire last season, which it could probably go and do again as well this season. It's really exciting for a fan's aspect as well. That's the thing, because it really just uh, generated a massive amount of, of interest. Back page stories on newspapers, leading news sports bulletins and things like that. It takes, it just elevates the game to a position that it hadn't really had before. Yeah, you've, yeah, spot on. I think obviously we're having Sky Sports on, on board as well as massive mm. for women's football. You can see the coverage has got much better so for us as players it's exciting to be a part of so look we want to go and put on a show this this season and hopefully more broadcasting can happen because it's certainly helping the women's game here in Scotland. You fancy it would be quite as tight again? Hopefully we don't make it that tight hopefully we can <laughs> go on um, and do a lot better than last season but like I said like the three horse last season was was exciting for women's football in Scotland so but yeah, hopefully we don't make it as tight as it was last season. You guys could uh, be the big winners on Thursday night. Celtic and, and Glasgow City play this week. If something gives in that one, then it helps your case. Yeah, of course, that's that's another top of the table clash. It's probably one that fans are excited to go and watch and, and, and obviously be a part of and play in. But here at Rangers, we just focus on ourselves um, and we focus on the next game and that's all we'll be focusing on. It's not only domestic uh, duties you've had, Nicola. We've had Scotland games just recently in the Nations League. First of all, England down at Sunderland. Is it as talented as England are? Do you think that Scotland surprised them, perhaps? I think so. Uh, I think, it's, well, in the first half, I think we maybe let ourselves down in terms of the way that we conceded. But I think when you watched us the second half, I think England really struggled against us. And that's something that we'd worked on. We knew that we could hurt them defensively. And, and look, I think we showed a, a great account of ourselves. And, and it was a great occasion as well, playing in that amount, the amount of fans down there yeah. as well. So, yeah, we're obviously a little bit gutted with the results. We felt like we deserved more from the game, but it just shows you how far we are becoming better as a nation as well. And, and yeah, we can take a lot of positives from that game. There was a real aggression about that second half performance, a real level of, of conviction. Do you just think that bodes well, just not just for this Nations League campaign, but then ahead of the, the European Championship campaign that will be coming up? Yeah, of course. I think our... Of our, of our game plan was to press England and I don't think many people would have expected that mm -hmm. from a Scotland side. I think they maybe expected us maybe to sit in and hit them on the counter but we, we've got such a talented group of players who are improving all the time under Pedro and we have belief and confidence within the squad that we could hurt England and I think you could see that in the second half and we know being in the Nations League A group it is a difficult group but we've shown more than many times that we compete against top level opposition. You look at the Australian match as well and we can, we can certainly go and hurt teams and that's something that we'll be looking to continue to do in the group. A massive loss, of course, Caroline being out now with ACL and Emma Watson too. Just how big a loss are both of those both of those girls? Huge. Uh, I, I would I would be lying if I said that there weren't huge losses. For me, Caroline Weir is it's like Argentina losing Messi for us. I'm so, and I generally am so gutted for Caroline. Um, and us as, as a whole team, we're, we're gutted. She's a huge player for us and she was playing at her absolute peak and the best football she's ever played and then you look at Emma Watson as well who's only 17 and does everything to be a top level like person and player so for us there are two huge losses but for us as a squad we're a tight-knit group and we've obviously got players and 
I've said that even to Kirsty McLean, and people get injured, and and that provides opportunities as well for other players to step up, and and it's going to it's let's go and see who's got the desire in the dressing room to really step up now. When the, when Caroline went down, did you fear the worst? Just the awkwardness of how she landed, and then how clear it was mm. that she couldn't carry on. Always, I, 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 like, and to be honest, Caroline Weir never goes down. So that's probably the part that shocked me the most is she's not a type of player that will stay down. So if Caroline's staying down, then something must must not be right. But I've I've said it before and I've said it after the game. I've watched it back and I think the whole time and, and Pedro said it as well, you've got to protect the players on the pitch for me. Uh, I think there was six six times there was tackles and stuff on Kirsty Hansen and targeting our best player Caroline and for me that's you've as a referee you've got to protect the players and, and I'm just absolutely gutted for Caroline. But yeah, you always fear the worst in women's football. It's such a hot topic at the moment, ACL injuries. But she's in the best place at Real Madrid for me. And uh, so she'll 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 smash her recovery and rehab, uh, I'm pretty sure and she'll come back stronger. Did you feel that on the pitch? Like what Pedro said, did you feel as though there was like a deliberate ploy to go out and, and take out the best players and target the best players? Yeah, I was, of course, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I, I can't sit here and I know that it's wrong to say and you don't want to blame um, the officials for um, injuries. But for me, you're, I, I just want to protect my players at all costs. And as a teammate, when I see my, like one of our best players for the national team go down with an ACL, I just, it just it, it angers me, to be honest. And I just... I, and I think it's not just down to the officials. I think in ACLs, there's got to be more research within women's football. Like, what is it that's causing so much? It's not even just Caroline Weir. Like, and it's it's more top players. You're looking at Beth, mm-hmm. Beth Mead, Viv Miedema, mm-hmm. Alexia Pateas. These are players who have been professional for a long time. So it certainly can't be a loading issue. So there has to be something more. And I, I think Six there's got to, times more likely. Exactly. So I think there's got to be more research for sure. Do you think that goes into maybe like the manufacturing of boots, maybe at training centres, the surfaces, what more do you think can be done to prevent these things from happening? I'd be pretending if I was sitting here and I knew the answer, if we knew the answer it would be less, yeah. would be less damage for sure, but I just think there's got to be more research from people who are more qualified than, than what I am. I think we as players do more than enough to try and protect ourselves, we do injury prevention all the time in the gym work, so there has to be something for me, um, but I'd, I'd like to see more research and Hopefully we can find answers of what's going on. Have you spoken to Caroline since she got the news back from the scan? I think Caroline's uh, phone will, will be going through the roof. <laughs> She's such a, a player of high demand. I've of course sent a, a message just to let her know that we're all here and, and I've spoke to the girls in the national team and we're all behind her as a player. Whatever she needs will be there. Same way Emma Watson but we'll just be there supporting and hopefully we can see them back on the pitch where they belong. Do, do you think she knew herself in the aftermath of that game last week? Do you think she knew the severity of it? I don't know. I th- a lot of people say when they've done the ACL, like sometimes they ju- you just know that feeling. Mm. It's a feeling that's yeah. like no other. So I can't sit here and say touch wood that I know that feeling, but I think players who have done it and what I've heard from them before is it's, they almost like know that feeling. So I'm not sure if Caroline knew in that moment. But yeah, absolutely devastated for her and Emma. Well, up next for Scotland is the Netherlands. How much of a challenge is that? Yeah, like I said, League A, tough group. But we've played Netherlands recently before as well and just fell short mm. at the very last really minute, late I think. Goals, yeah. And it was from a throw-in, our own set piece. So we showed that we compete, can compete against them as mm-hmm. well. So it's going to be a tough match. But if we turn up on the day, then I'm, not, I'm pretty sure we can go and get the result. How huge was that point against Belgium? <laughs> hands in. Massive. I, I remember it even just going in the net and just being relieved because I knew that point can it can almost be like something that we really need it towards the end mm-hmm. of the campaign so for it to go in the back of the net we know it's going to be huge and then you look at the result that the Netherlands have then went and bet, beat in England uh-huh. so it's, it's going to be a tight tight group so mm-hmm. Hopefully that point can be really important That's the thing, us. it really opened the group up that night, the results that night really yeah. opened the group up and you think if you hadn't taken the point, you're marooned at the bottom. The fact that you take the point and you claw Belgium back a bit too, it, it helps. Yeah, of course. I think out of the two games, uh, it's, it sounds sounds weird, but I genuinely think we, we deserve to potentially win both games mm-hmm. and I don't want to sit here and sound big-headed, but I feel like we've done more than enough to go and get maximum points from each game. So of course, the first 45 against England, we obviously could have done better, but the way that we then turned up for the second was 
much better and, and it's just chances created that we need to be more relentless in front of goal. It's all right saying that we're maybe defending well in moments, but we need to be more relentless to if we want to go and challenge in this league, this league A campaign. Given just how fraught it is between the domestic and international calendar, then how do you get an opportunity to absorb that, to go away and properly think about it? Or are you someone who prefers just to stay busy and stay on it all the time? To be honest, I, pref I prefer staying busy. I, I like I like the fact that, that it's a, a busy schedule at Rangers and then we go away and and it's, it's such an exciting place to be at the moment, whether that being at Rangers or whether that being the national team. I've really enjoyed Pedro coming in, the changes that he's brought in, and we're a really close-knit group. And I think you can see that in our performances on the pitch. So, yeah, like I said, I, I like to stay busy and, and just playing games. I, I love playing for Scotland. I love playing for Rangers. So I'm in a really happy place at the moment. Was it a hard watch watching the, the World Cup from Australia and New Zealand? Yeah, of course. I think the way that we... We went out the last game against Ireland. It was probably one of the most devastating games I've ever been a part of. And I think it's still, it's not, well, it is still hard to talk about, but to then go and watch the World Cup and almost realising that we could have been there and we probably should have been there whether we, if we had took our chances. So, yeah, it was a tough watch, but, yeah. Yeah, still, still, it still hurts me a wee bit that we weren't there. But like I said, like women's football is massively improving. And to watch the World Cup and see that the level that it's at is huge, and it only makes us as players more hungry to be at the Euros now. And just before we wrap up, then Nicola, what's your aspirations personally and for Rangers going ahead this season? Personally, I just want to continue giving my all for the team. Um, I, I just want to come into the training centre and, and be the best version of myself. That's. I never really set goals that are um, quite ambitious. I just like to be pretty, pretty steady as a footballer. I just like to make sure that I come in and be the best version of myself and make sure that my teammates around me really lift it up. And as a team at Rangers, you're playing for a couple of Rangers, you're expected to win trophies. So hopefully we can go and do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, best of luck for the season ahead, both uh, domestic and internationally. Thank you. On behalf of Alice and myself, Nicola, thank you so much for joining us. And that brings us to the end of our show. We'll have some more action to look forward to next week.